Hey, this is Rido, and today we're looking at Lego Worlds. This is gonna have a little intro here that I'll mostly let play out, I imagine. Um, this is a different kind of Lego game. At least it started off as being a different kind of Lego game. Maybe it ended up not really being too much around that. It's not a licensed property. It's still made by TT Games, though. So it is more focused on Lego than something like Lego Star Wars, for instance, where it was half Star Wars and half Lego and mostly focused on minifigs and very little building. Anything is possible. And here you are, just starting out. So obviously here when you start to look at the trees and the buildings there is an actual focus on actually showing how you would actually build something with legos and use lego pieces instead of things that just kind of look like they're built out of lego pieces there is a potential certainly in a game like this you might run out of lego sets to emulate but there's a lot of lego sets out there so that would take a while This intro is definitely setting you up to be a master builder, whatever that actually means in this context. Lego does have Lego does have a master builder certification program. For adults, really, not for kids. Uh, but it just kind of means Lego officially recognizes that you are actually good at things. Alright, so a lot of the previous Lego games I've have, had to cover have had a micro stuttering issue. I figure we should touch upon that real quick. Um, if you go to the EXE file, um, if you can find it, through Steam. I, I'm not even going to bother to explain it. If you find the executable, right click it in Windows and go to Compatibility tab, there's a thing that says Disable Full Screen Optimizations. Apparently at some point Windows 8 or Windows 10 introduced this concept of full screen optimizations and it just doesn't work with LEGO games. Oddly it doesn't work with a few other games I've noticed. Um, but when you just disable it, things are for the most part fine. Uh, there might be a place or two where you run into a game that drops a single cut, a single frame or it locks up for a half second, but it is hardly anywhere close to the problems you will have if you don't disable it, where you will have increasing amounts of micro stuttering over and over again as the game goes on. This game, when I did launch it, was not at the right resolution, so I've got everything up to 1080p, I've got everything up to high, um, I think everything is good. I think you want to go full screen mode instead of borderless windowed mode. I have all the effects on high, or just turned on. This is the first LEGO game, though, that has actual analytics preferences collecting certain technological information about your gameplay, which we anonymize to provide and analyze and improve the game uh, games and offerings. Uh, this is the first time I've seen them point out that that exists or do anything to uh, potentially have it so you can opt out of any of that. I also turned on the subtitles. But most of those settings very possibly won't save until you actually start a new game, even though it says it's saving there. So you would want to start a new game. Uh, so the, the main thing to know about LEGO Worlds is at least when it was in early access, um, it was definitely building itself more like it was going to be a MMO, a multiplayer, a massive multiplayer online game where you ran around and actually built things with Lego studs. A, a new take 
on a Lego simulator where the other TT games you just go up to a pile of bricks and you hold down a button and then there's just a kind of cartoony pile of dust that moves around and it throws pieces together and builds something uh, with perhaps the exception of the pretty bad Lego Lord of the Rings and Lego Hobbit games where that that actually did have a gameplay mechanic that almost felt like you were putting chunks of legos together with other legos to build a few things but that wasn't even a core gameplay mechanic that you did very often uh, and this has been a consistent issue certainly with the tt uh made lego games is that there actually has never been a lot of lego in it there's just been licensed minifig characters here we may see zero licensed minifig characters, almost a direct opposite concept around something like Lego Dimensions, where all of the characters in Lego Dimensions were licensed characters, and there was a whole Toys to Life element originally with Lego Dimensions, although you don't really need any of that uh, now. They patched it, so you don't need the actual toys. Uh, let's start instead of just listening to the music here. Autosave will now use game one, Lego World's autosave in progress when you see this icon of just a W. Um, please do not turn off the system when the icon is displayed. So, they, it was going to be a full on uh, case where there was not a single story, load, story mode element in the game. It was just going to be people building whatever they want, playing against each other. There maybe was going to be a bit of a gamification in the tutorial when you first started playing that would tell you how things work and maybe not unlock every single thing immediately, but for the most part you should have you were supposed to be able to start with the Lego gadget gun and suck in builds by other people and suck in just random bricks and build everything um, <clears throat> build anything you want from the beginning but at some point they kind of betrayed the fans of that concept of the sandbox mode and put in this adventure mode which for a video game critic the adventure mode I guess would be the one to look at they also failed kind of miserably here in that none of the other TT games have online play there's a lot of logical reasons why you should be able to play online with the previous Lego games since they're all co-op games it would make a lot of sense to just let two players play together but since this is most this was going to be an MMO they had to spend a ridiculous amount of time just censoring all the builds because obviously somebody's going to build, build a dong somebody's going to build some boobs uh, somebody's going to spell out a bad word and they were bankrupting themselves trying to censor or find make an algorithm to censor uh, inappropriate builds for a kids game when the right move would have never would have been to never even try to make it online in the first place the mmo aspect i think falls apart terribly and even the simulation part of this kind of falls apart terribly because nobody is legitimately going to come and use lego worlds to build something out of legos because it won't let you print it particularly if this was on a, a console you wouldn't be able to plug in a printer to, to get any kind of instructions or even general different angle views of it you wouldn't be able to get a parts list to go and buy more pieces from something like bricklink um, there are other con lego construction emulators or simulators out there uh yeah it would be called a simulator that would do a way better job if you were trying to build something it's funny that you get to the second screen but and then you're back to settings 
uh, but that is pretty standard. And then we have the kind of Lego codes for no reason. And then we have add-on content, which just pops up the Lego Steam Workshop overlay. Hmm. I think... Nope, there is actually a LEGO World's Monster Pack and a LEGO World Space Pack of DLC that apparently I haven't purchased. Hmm. I've only gotten the Showcase Pack. But that probably doesn't really matter too much either. Let's see. Then I have to remember how to get the how to get out of that. Um, yeah. And save model. There we just saved showcase model 116. Does that mean showcase model 116 is just not going to be shown? Hmm. Which I guess means you should showcase or download everything. Hmm. These are fairly large builds, certainly. Uh, and it's it's going to be up to each individual whether they care about Ninjago. Whether they would want to download those models. And you can see the game is kind of struggling now to potentially go into a download and find something else to load up and show. Yep. That literally is everything they had available to show. Suffice it to say, this game was fairly quickly abandoned and in favor of other LEGO licensed properties. There, there is inherently this problem and maybe it will change now that Warner Brothers may at some point no longer war no longer be a parent company of TT Games. This is my own speculation. There's been no evidence of that. But Warner Brothers was owned by AT&T and AT&T sold them off so that a lot of things potentially could change. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we did see Warner Brothers in the licensing aspect the demand that all lego games have a warner brothers like property licensed and that's all they've all really done for the most part star wars of course is was at the time owned by george lucas and then eventually it was owned by disney and um warner brothers i think at some point may have been owned by fox and at some point fox may have been bought by disney so maybe warner brothers is a is part of disney but i don't think it is um but yeah, with the exception of Star Wars, Harry Potter was a Warner Brothers license. The Lord of the Rings was a Warner Brothers license. Almost every non-Star Wars Lego game was a Warner Brothers license. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was a t Disney license. So this really just doesn't make this make it a lot of sense in their general idea of having them license their own property to a subsidiary so the subsidiary pays money to the parent company which is really inside baseball business sandbox mode is a fully created building experience for logo worlds this mode will have all the tools objects and bricks unlocked from the start let your imagination run wild we recommend beginners try adventure mode first so you can see how they are totally trying to push you into adventure mode and i guess that probably is the right thing to do the, the problem with this, of course, is unlike other LEGO games, this adventure mode may very well give you at most eight levels and then leave you with just the sandbox mode, which for very young kids might be too much. And for older fans of LEGO, it, it might be too little. Hmm. What you really would have wanted if this was going to work as an MMO 
would have been random quest givers in a sandbox mode playing online. But sandbox mode and adventure mode both seem like they're going to be single player experiences. And see, this guy isn't even like Benny from the Lego movie because I think this may have started production um, before the Lego movie. So you don't have any real named characters. I think this is even before Lego tried once again to um, have named interesting characters and have a cartoon around specifically named characters. And they've tried to do that with a couple sets over the past couple of years, but uh, that cartoon I think hasn't has either been delayed or hasn't become very popular. So. I haven't seen any video game based on that. Uh, in a lot of ways, this is sort of the same idea as the Lego movie. Uh, we have these flat Lego planets, certainly. Though, as a, as a problem, I would say. Like, I think at this point, you probably don't want to... To give any interest at all to a flat world concept even from a video game all right so you're crafting yourself completely and you can see that there is a kind of considerable limit here as far as what you can what you can build. So you could play as the astronaut guy or intergalactic girl, which that's a little limited. You could be a caveman or we could have blonde hair instead of a helmet or no hair. We have no beards, so not particularly as inclusive as you might be, where some kids maybe want to give a beard to a female character when um, you can do that in the real world. There's no beards even for the guy, so it may just really have the whole thing locked down more. We could also randomize, or we could add a character, which would just add a slot, and then custom one. I suppose this is probably just a copy of what we already had. We can have a explorer, chess piece, um, construction work in chess piece, an astronaut piece, chess piece. The Lego minifigs sometimes will do cleavage, uh, just a single line to indicate some cleavage for female chess pieces, but for most parts they tend to make them more male focused they'll also put sometimes some hip lines on female chess pieces but more often than not you can put a male chess piece on a female character and not tell the difference arms even the way the arms are being depicted here are not 100 percent accurate as to how lego arms are and you can see that also in the way her legs are bending. That wouldn't actually work either. And then you can have astronaut hands or nothing. For some reason, I cannot move the controller over to the left. It, I don't know why that wasn't working. So you can have... New Galactic Girls gray hands or astronauts slightly brown hands. And then the hip piece is a piece that you can't really swap around in Lego sets. So I don't know why it specifically is ever something you can do in Lego games. Like you would pretty much be breaking your Lego pieces to try and switch out the hip piece. Of course at the factory they can match different colored legs to different hip, hip pieces, but um, 
if you were to try to convince Lego to build something with a different hip piece and different legs, that they probably would not accept that through their submission service Lego ideas. And again, I have to go all the way down before I can select things. Also, the left and right stick, the right stick is not moving the camera. And left bump and right bump and left trigger and right trigger is not moving anything. D-pad's not moving anything, so you can't really look at the character either. Um, so yeah, you start off incredibly simplistically here to a point where they might as well have just said no we'll just start you with this main character and then get you running around on the open world earlier instead Pirate of taking 10 playground. minutes that immediately gave me your first an achievement. lego world so much to discover but your rocket took a beating a few gold bricks should fix it right up so we're going to have basically just a narrator talking to us. We now have the start menu. Look, a meteorite. Hmm. And immediately we have an objective. You can tell, though, when you look at this, this is really made out of Lego, where... Up until this point, a tree very possibly would have just been a generic video game tree in a TT game. And this ground is really made out of Lego. You really should take a closer look at that crash site. So we can punch things as normal. Let's do the Minecraft thing. Let's punch a tree and get some wood. Nope, doesn't work that way. Clearly that's the idea here. Uh, we can zoom in with left trigger, zoom out with right trigger. Left bump, right bump, not doing anything. Hey. You can you can wave with the B button. The back button puts you in first person perspective. The pause brings you to a overworld map. And you can see in this tutorial, there's nothing that we haven't discovered. But the core of these... Worlds will have troublemakers, chests, gold bricks, uh, quest areas, towns, and dungeons. Which, okay, that's something. And the map is yet again made with Legos, just scaled down. Which I suppose all of that would be kind of hard to do. Hmm. I'm having a hard time, though, figuring out how you would get downward to the icons at the bottom of the screen because nothing seems to move that that way. Oh, no, it's just glitched again. Skydive if stuck, return to rocket settings, save and continue, save and exit world, save and quit game. There's, there's a lot of saves and do, do something. All right. And then when you are up here, you can use the D-pad to potentially look at every single book and every single block and potentially put a waypoint down. Hmm. But the map is not a one-to-one -one comparison, so it's actually not going to be that useful. Uh, the above world map might be slightly useful, and I'm kind of glad to see that because I don't think I've ever seen that in any other LEGO game. But most other LEGO games are so incredibly linear anyways that you wouldn't have to deal with that. <clears throat> but I don't like the little plus information you really should in take the a bottom. Closer look at, that crash site. at the bottom right. There's a weird disconnect here, though, that you would be potentially collecting gold bricks and studs the discovery tool. as a currency. Use the powerful discovery tool to scan and collect new models, vehicles, creatures, and more. 
Characters can be collected once you complete a quest, task, or challenge from them. Once they're in your collection, you can use the tool to summon things into your worlds. Place them precisely where you want them, or fire them into the sky with wild abandon. The discovery tool lets you create one, ten, or a hundred and more copies. Oh. I'd question if the game crashes. Weird looking creature things. The discovery tool also has a handy delete function. Phew. Getting to grips with the discovery tool is the first step on your journey to becoming a master builder. I, I hate to be critical of the voice actor, but his voice honestly does not inspire awe as much as it, it has a slight tinge of, oh, this is going to be the bad guy at the end of the game. And I don't think there really is going to be a bad guy at the end of the game. And arguably that might be just bad game directing, a voice acting directing and not the voice actor's voice alone. Okay. So aim with the right stick. Why are why is discovery? Hmm. Well, what do you do to fire it though? Hmm. Well, apparently you have to actually fire at specific things that it wants you to fire at. Hmm. New discovery type unlocked. <laughs> Creatures. So the the whole game is effectively, I guess, a collectathon with an in-game currency in adventure mode to purchase things. Okay, I see how this is gonna go, but yeah, seems like it could be a lot. New hmm. discovery type unlocked. Objects. So. Yeah. With each of these things basically having to be handmade. And I think they had hoped, probably very stupidly, uh, that people online would have just made a whole bunch of designs and objects and then Maybe even Lego could have gotten those de designs and used them for ideas in the future. Hmm. And so there's going to be even some subcategories. Uh, food, boxes, and plants. Uh, but I don't think these subcategories specifically connect to uh, actual sets that are sold. Or that would be sold now at least. And then you have a whole search bar... Because obviously there's going to be so much, and I'd assume you just have to use a keyboard. Which I'm playing this with a controller right now, but... Um, let's see. And it seems like you should just hit X and unlock these immediately. Um, let's see if I hit X... I don't get any coins back. So this is going to be a issue certainly in which I'm going to end up discovering a lot more than I can actually uh, do something around or use. Yeah, and at a certain level, in sandbox mode, you would... Um, that should have been a new, new type of discovery. Type unlocked. Vehicles. So you have a camera car and a rowing boat. And I can't afford either one of them. Yeah. I imagine fairly quickly in your gameplay experience, you would... We'll just run into 
everything. Everything there is to find, and then you'll uh, accomplish a few quests, and then in accomplishing those few quests, you would start to have enough currency and even though Lego is a constructive game I can't help but feel like the right way to play this may very well be to find your target and just remove everything so that there is fewer things in the game. You can't hold the X, which just definitely feels like you would play with this gun almost like a uh, Lego version of Ghostbusters. So, so that you could just suck in things. That's what the intro animation was was showing and that's just kind of not so what not what's happening over here why brings up this your inventory and you're clearly gonna want to play around that hmm. kind of feels like there should be entire strategies around sucking up big areas you can't really get in the water but yeah it definitely feels like you you would need to just hold X or I guess you could just hold Y nope nothing really would point hmm. all right so let's see what this person wants discover and then remove because we can't jump. I think we can jump. Hmm. You could we could have jumped over this. And will these be voice acted characters? I suspect yes. Nope. They aren't voice acted, which you would basically not have to you couldn't have voice acting really if this was going to be uh if this was going to be an MMO game that had just procedurally generated quests, some pigs and chickens is what I need right here. Savvy. So she wants a bunch of chickens and a bunch of pigs. So discover that. I think we'd already discovered the chickens. Discovered that. Hmm. Hmm. So. How do we get more currency? Because it seems like once you unlock something, you've unlocked it. It doesn't feel like you get any level of extra rewards by discovering things hmm also feels like things that you haven't discovered yet should probably glow with a hue of light around it hmm otherwise you are going to run into a nightmare scenario 
once you get on bigger islands. Like right now, this is a really small island, but this is only going to get worse. Hmm. Interesting how in removing that boat we we spawned another boat. Okay. And this is all the same TT game concept. Although you're actually rowing with the A button. Which that is a little different. Stroke. Stroke. I think you're supposed to hold down the A button. Yeah. It would have been nice for the game to tell you that. It really is just leaving me hanging here. And it is just an invisible wall where you can fall off the ledge. Hmm. Not even an invisible wall. Inventory hmm. unlocked. Hmm. What did I just do to deserve an inventory item? Hmm. I just picked up an orange fish. Oh. So for some reason fish are items you can just swim around and try and catch. Hmm. Which this really gives you more to do around fish or around uh, the water in the first place than I have ever seen before. Nice little sit in a chair animation. But you have to hit B to get out of it. It did give me some studs. Alright. And I guess you really would have just had to have played Lego games before to know that some Lego things can be punched. And that will give you studs. Although in this case, it's not even particularly as good as most Lego games because... There's a lot of things here you can't punch. And once you've crossed that line and made everything a Lego thing, uh, it does feel like everything should be punchable. Okay, pigs and chickens. Let's see. Come over here. Unlock this, unlock this, do this, one, two, hmm. then chickens, seems you can move these up, down, and you can rotate them that way, not make them upside down. How high can you drop a chicken? Oh, I'd say pretty high. But these don't cost anything. Really. To place. You just have to unlock them once. So you get gold bricks for doing quests, which is different. The hmm. first golden step on the road to becoming a master builder. But you'll hmm. need two more gold bricks to fix your rocket. Yeah. It is strange how this game is oddly different from other LEGO games and, still, and yet still kind of relies on you being familiar with playing the other lego games which most lego people would be familiar with that because 
you're unlikely to buy this game. Although that's not 100% true now because LEGO Worlds is probably one of the cheapest LEGO games. So if you had a parent on Steam looking for a LEGO game to buy for their kids and they were going for the cheapest one and they bought LEGO Worlds, you would you'd probably have the kids struggling. Like, it's not completely obvious that you need to run around and punch things to get coins after the game really just told you to uh, scan things. And map-wise, I don't know if there's a way to really know if you've collected all the map items in a place and if I'm taking things and breaking things it's possible that I might break something I haven't discovered yet hmm. and I don't know what happens there if that was the case. It feels like what should happen is something like this, where... Where the... Fire here... Maybe can't be removed or punched. That was 5,000. It's really just not enough. Yeah, you'd think things you haven't discovered would be the things you can't break, but seems like no, it's more just standard things uh, that can't be broken, can't be broken. Clearly, almost all of this work making these 3D models are of 3D models that would have been made for previous TT LEGO games or future TT LEGO games, one or the other. Let's see what she wants. They tell you basically that you need the gun. Captain wants a pirate clock tower, but I can't open the chest to get the plans. Can you help? All right, so it's hard. I can't even move the camera. Old Y, bring up this to discover, and then press X to remove. Hmm. Hmm. At that point. See, it definitely feels like this game has a weird secondary currency. And then we have a B chest opening an animation, which gives us Lego plans. New build something. Discovery type unlocked. Brick builds. Hmm. This is where the game, I think, falls in a very different experience. These were all the ones I saved from the main screen as far as brick builds. But. This is where they they have to give up the ghost and realize that there's not a realistic scenario where kids are going to have the attention span to try and build a clock tower multiple times, even if they want to use a clock tower multiple times. That's just not realistic. But I do have to say, compared to all the other TT games that have existed this one by far feels the most Lego-y but then you still run into the problem of their it's still not really feeling that Lego-y let's, let's just be honest here Lego as a concept is never going to really work in a digital format not in the same way where you could actually put down uh, 
put down and feel the brakes and and have that tactical physical interaction with bricks two out of three does one more and you can lift off to another world and you just put that anywhere you wanted to which that is really cool certainly and you can look in this construction it really is built with bricks there's very little cheating ha happening here visually there was some cheating, certainly, in how it was assembled, because putting that together slowly, brick by brick, would have been hours of time. And I've certainly built brick sets, Lego sets, that are like that scale and that size and much bigger even. Um, but you can't make a video game around that. Let's see. So now we have a pirate clock face that's part of the tower. So in building a brick built section of the tower, you could you found some other things you can discover. So that's cool. I'm hearing a little jingle sound effect and I kind of feel like that's what you would need to have the whole game doing is making jingle sound effects to tell you where to find important things. My, my, I really do have to kind of question though whether there is a... So this is a stud chest. Yeah, I question though whether there really is going to be a requirement in any of these levels to find everything. And so then you have to put this away and then punch this to get studs. Hmm. And it almost feels like what should happen is you should do the three quest goals, leave the level, and then they should tell you to come back to the level later when you have maybe a bigger massive destruction weapon that could break things and collect studs or magnet modes what we're not seeing compared to other lego games is like a magnet mode ability or anything that would suck in studs from a further distance so if i was to hit this and run it these little chests all already give us Put the studs in such a place that that you automatically collect them so you may just have a magnet mode anyways i kind of thought that would have been an achievement but apparently not hmm. see what the captain wants that's the last quest I need a pirate throne to make this ship feel like home. Okay, we have already found the pirate throne, but it's doing us a favor of telling us. And this is what we saw in the intro, certainly. Let's give him an in intro video. They showed us solving this. Three gold we bricks. get two achievements. That's exactly what your rocket needs. Congratulations. Mm. Discoverer Builder. Hmm. We've now leveled up. We need six gold bricks to move to the next level. Hmm. It definitely, though, is weird because... Let's just look at the map. It says... Up here, the area that has been explored is 
100%. And we found three gold bricks and one big treasure chest that had the tower in it. And I guess the question is, are there any troublemakers on this island or not? Because everything else says zero out of zero. Hmm. Since this is a tutorial level, I guess that is just the question we have to figure out. That's still glowing. And then this little Lego pig thing. Seems to not be something you can actually scan. Hmm. hmm. When you get that on screen heads up display, whether you want it or not, while you're in this mode. But if I'm not in this mode, would I get something to glow? Seemingly, this rocket ship is not something you can scan. Which, that seems odd. We need to find, if there is anything left to find, something that we could scan that would glow in front of us. Then we need to put the gun away and see if it still glows. More than likely, there would be something in the water. The game is... Okay. So. Does there she glow? There are no more gold bricks on this world. Get back to the rocket when you're ready to explore the rest of the galaxy. <laughs> New discovery type unlocked. You've <laughs> discovered your first character. Characters can be unlocked when you've done a quest for them. Once unlocked and purchased, you can place them in the world. But oddly, they don't turn into you. Whereas other TT Lego games would totally, you'd be totally swapping between characters when you unlock new characters. Right. In that general direction, I think we saw something glowing. Yes, there's a flower here that is glowing. So if I put this away... Can we dive? Yes. Okay, so we just broke that. And that is glowing. In a lot of ways, this feels like this could be a nightmare scenario. Though. In that you would potentially have to run around an entire level trying to find things and potentially go through all of this start mode, adventure mode, and not find it, everything you were looking for. There are no more gold bricks on this world. Get back to the rocket when you're ready to explore the rest of the galaxy. Okay. I see pigs marked on the map. Which... I guess if we use the map, we could possibly try and figure something out as far as pigs. Hmm. Like, it is weird that the pigs are... can just remove characters completely. If we remove chickens... 
I don't think chickens are big enough to be shown on the map. Hmm. Hmm. Can't remove everything. Though. Hmm. Yeah, if the idea was to remove all life on the map, that would be too much of a hassle. If it was just to remove the life that you put on the map, I guess that would be doable. Or just the big things. Even. Still definitely feels like there's a possibility of there being more. This there is a really no big gold area. On this world. Get back to the rocket when you're ready to explore the rest of the galaxy. Hmm. So if there was any kind of achievement as far as getting rid of all the life in the world I would have gotten it then Let's see put this away so we can punch this and get some more studs <clears throat> yeah at some level you would like to stop like you, you would kind of like to stop using using these the gizmo in favor of just playing it normally and running around more studs Yeah, and it certainly becomes more of a standard TT game. This is a complaint I have feel like has existed for a long time with TT games, though, is that you are mostly just running and punching things instead of actually building anything. It's real easy to, to make a game where you run and punch things. It's a lot harder to make a game that actually requires creativity Hi. there are no more gold bricks on this world get back to the rocket when you're ready to explore the rest of the galaxy i imagine we might hear that reminder quite a lot so the thing i want to do first is we're at 63,000 studs in a normal Lego game, you would expect to, you would want to hold on to that for an extras option. If there is going to be an extras, it's going to have to be somewhere down here. Uh, I don't think we may get anything like red bricks. And we can now play as a pirate lady if we want to, which has unlocked our item collection. As far as character configuration a lot more um, which for a mobile game the item correction I the I the character customization is gonna be a big deal certainly and we need 65 gold bricks to get a jetpack which almost certainly lets us uh, fly around 40 to get a block gun 30 to get a grapple gun 25 to get a sky spinner 20 to get a lantern and 15 to get a camera which probably the camera unlocks like a photo mode I don't know what the back button is I feel like the plus button Okay, that's a throwable item, or whatever that's worth. 
So if I said to say there we don't no know what we're doing with any of these world. items back to the rocket when you're at ready the moment, to explore and the rest of the galaxy. a decent amount of items that we will pick up that are just going to be some kind of secondary currency. All right. And then... No buy all button either. Which that's going to be a nightmare if you don't stay up on it. Because each level you're effectively going to have to do this. If this is a small coral four and this is a small coral five, then we kind of knew there's more small corals out there. And seemingly sometimes because these are out of order as far as not showing the new ones first you're gonna cause a problem notice that the mouse cursor also just popped up there and I assume that's a glitch and not just because I ever so slightly may have bumped my mouse So is that everything we found? That doesn't feel like everything we found. With the exception of people. No. Camera car. Rowing boat. We should see what the camera car does. Hmm. Right. There are no hmm. more gold bricks on this world. Get back to the rocket when you're ready to explore the rest of the galaxy. So when you get in the back here, you have a right bump, left bump, camera built into her car. Then crane up, or crane down. It's not a terrible design, and you can actually look at this design, spin around this, and probably build this if you have enough Legos. Whereas so many things in other TT games are just impossible to build. Something like that tower is kind of impossible without having buying a set around that tower. Something like the giant pirate ship is kind of out of the realm. Four, three... Two, one. Hold X, close the shot. Hmm. That didn't really feel like that took a camera as much as that recorded video. I don't know if that actually recorded video in anything really or if that was just something that was roughly the simulation of creating video all right let's see if we can put this showcase model on the ground no requirement for studs which is kind of crazy because at some level this was going to be a game no gold bricks on I thought where you really were going to have to when you're ready destroy to the rest of the galaxy. entire um, entire large sections of um, like I thought you would have had to destroy entire large sections of the maps to get the bricks and that the maximum number of bricks in a world would limit you down to what you could actually build much how minecraft adventure mode at least limits you to that level you can also see how that took a absolute ridiculous amount of time to to build it hmm. 
And inside here, they've got glowing Lego lights and little Lego sets on sale, on show, showcase, not sale. So you can see that there's a lot, a lot going on here, even with a crazy scientist character fighting you. And when you break him, you get studs. Hmm. And over here, you've got all kinds of gold bricks. So what can we discover in this? Seems like you could discover a lot of things, but that would be fairly cheating as far as this whole showcase. There are no more so I don't think I want to get back to the rocket when you discover ready to explore items the rest of the galaxy that way doesn't seem like you can come out the face of this character so just jump out the back And it's kind of hard to get the camera to look the right direction. But yeah, this is really a great example of what the LEGO Worlds was supposed to be. It was supposed to be random people who are fans of LEGO somehow, for some reason, getting interested in this game and building these giant builds in a virtual environment and being able to share them better of course that even when that concept was first pitched that concept would have been fairly flawed because really good adult lego creators like master builders as you probably call them all have either websites or youtube channels uh there's plenty of uh, AFOLs, adult fans of Lego groups and circles and fan pages that you can follow to see builds like this not limited and constrained into a like a video game. In fact, I would argue there's probably a decent number of master builders who just don't have time to actually play any of the Lego video games and barely have ever touched upon them. Or barely ever do touch upon them. But then at the last second I think they realized that no wasn't going to sell. So this world. they crammed the in when you're ready to explore the a rest of the galaxy. kind of simplified adventure mode. And their hopes to beat Minecraft even when this first launched would have not been very high. Minecraft has recently, in the past couple of years, added a lot of new content and only grown in popularity. Um, but even four or five years ago, a Lego Minecraft doesn't sound that different than just Minecraft. In fact, it's actually regressive compared to Minecraft because Minecraft has the whole redstone logic. It has more enemies, it has weapons of different uh, styles as far as gold swords and stone swords and things like that. Um, there's... The galaxy map shows you the worlds you have been to, the world you're mm. on, and the worlds you're yet to explore. Collect more gold bricks mm. and you'll be able to travel farther afield to bigger worlds with more biomes and a huge variety of new discoveries. Let's listen to the credits. Then you have this crawl advertisement. Welcome to Lego Worlds. So that was Pirate Playground, original name, a bunch of numbers, adventure mode, and then there's a save date, and then there's something that says 75 out of 400. Which I question what that means as far as 75 out of 400. 
Yeah. And then you have this like picture of a map but I don't know if this map is actually changing anything maybe it is maybe it isn't because this entire white bar here might have been that giant build I brought in clearly it is going to just save the world for you and you can't go any further and we have also the mouse cursor on the ma screen so you have clearly a spiral in which you're gonna follow the adventure mode I see one two three four yeah one two three four five more levels it feels like and that's it and it's just loading and you can see like a 100% loaded in the bottom right which at 100% it might as well just disappear so it's not messing with the animation and so you shoot up and apparently he was going to say something there but because it was already loaded they just skipped the probably randomized joke dialogue that you would see otherwise and so you go up and then you go down prehistoric peril hmm. and everything is just auto saving anyway so like you can't really even pause the game and save it'll just do it for you so yeah that's the first level i imagine we'll go six or seven episodes in lego worlds but i seriously doubt we're going to wrap back into something like a usual lego game where you get an achievement for maybe beating every level or finding a bunch of like mm, kits to build certain items or vehicle kits in a lego game or finding red bricks or collecting a certain amount of studs in a level or finding certain gold bricks lying around i just don't i, don't, I think you'll have a few quests to get gold bricks and that's it in each m map it's not even really as much a level as it is just a map with some quests on it uh, and normally in a lego tt game you would go through like 12 different levels and then you'd go back and do them a second time to get all the collectibles i'm would really question if we're ever going to return to any of these locations uh, you may have to just jump around more as we get to the bigger islands uh, to discover items you may have to go to one planet to discover an item for a quest on a different planet, for instance. Uh, but you may not. And if that is the case, then this will be maybe seven episodes, seven hours of entertainment. Uh, you also have to point out the greediness of LEGO games. In that even the most recent reboot of the LEGO Star Wars games has, as of this recording, just announced several bits of dlc that unlocks more minifig characters in each dlc in lego games since they started adding dlc the lego games have been way overpriced for the amount of content you get like the original lego star wars games was um well the lego star wars complete saga original lego game which would have been the first two lego games merged together was an amazing value you easily got 60 to 120 hours of gameplay out of it and there were no microtransactions at all and now since they've gone full circle many many years later the new lego star wars reboot is going to try and nickel and dime you at least 
four different ways for characters that otherwise would have been in-game inlocks for free or you know, just rewards for having completed the game or having owned the game. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.